Hello everybody and welcome to the National Gallery of Australia. It's lovely to see you here today. And um, I'd like to say that the National Gallery and Carers ACT have had a long relationship and we're very happy today to be extending this to carers across Australia. So welcome to everybody who's watching as well. To start with, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, the Ngambri and Ngunnawal peoples, and to acknowledge their elders past and present. It's a beautiful land and we're very lucky to be here. We're going to be talking about an extraordinary series, um, Sidney Nolan's Ned Kelly series, and it is one of the great collections in this gallery. Now, most of you probably know the story of Ned Kelly. I think even today it's still very contested. You know, was, was he a good guy? Was he a bad guy? I don't think there's an easy answer to what happened. It's a complex story. Nolan um, looked at it from a number of points of view. He saw that Ned Kelly, he thought, was a rebel reformer. He said that um, he felt that Kelly was forced to become an outlaw because of the result of injustices on the poor Irish people um, in Australia. So when, when Australia was still very much colonies and there was an English colony in Melbourne and he felt that the Irish were often unfairly arrested and put in jail and so there was a lot of tension between ordinary working people on little farm holdings and the police. So um, now I'm going to take you through some of the really key works in this collection because what Nolan's done is he's given us his vision of Ned Kelly that's almost become how we think of Kelly. So the thing that he's done is he's created this very simplified form of Kelly in his armour. Now as a young boy, Nolan actually saw the Kelly armour, you know it's in the State Library of Victoria, but what he did is he was very interested in modernist art which was about pairing things back, simplifying. So he's just got this very simple iconic form. But symbols are important aren't they and it's really stuck and notice how he's made this image part of the landscape. And I'm going to occasionally refer to my notes because I'd like to um, bring you some of Nolan's own words because it brings it so much to life. And Nolan said, this is Kelly the Defiant. I put Kelly on top of his horse in a particularly orderly manner. He's quite sort of anchored there, isn't he? I wanted an air of perfect authority. It looks simple, but I also wanted a feeling of space and the landscape. And look at how you can see the clouds. It's quite nonsensical in a way, you know, it's poetic. It's not trying to be literal. So you can actually see the sky through the visor. And as we go around, um, and we're going to look at the story in the way that Nolan's laid it out, and it's his version of the story, but look at what happens with the eyes in that little slot as we go. But I'm now going to take you to the very beginnings of the story as Nolan saw it, and it is quite filmic, you know, it's very episodic. So let's move over to the other side. So we start off in very much in the muddy Australian landscape. You know, he's not trying to glorify it or anything. And in fact, he paints a number of different landscapes. So as we go around, look at, look at the paintings themselves. We're going to tell a story, but look at the way he painted. He's using what's called um, Ripplin. It's a kind of enamel paint, so it dries quite quickly. You know, he worked relatively fast on these paintings. Here we're looking at the Australian muddy landscape pretty nondescript. He's trying to give you a feeling of ambiguity. Nolan himself said he wanted to give the impression that it could be a sunset or sunrise, but it could also suggest a fire on the horizon. So there's already that little bit of tension, but he's starting off slowly, you know, like a concerto might build. So I'm not going to talk about every work, but have a look as we go around quiet, sleepy little country towns at the backdrop to what becomes quite a dramatic story. But where the, and so this is like the police lighting a fire in the bush, and this is where the action really begins. 
So this is about um, the visit of a constable to the Kelly household and he's come to arrest them because of um, he thinks that they've stolen some horses and the Kelly say that's not true. The constable sits down and he pulls one of the daughters onto his knee and Dan Kelly doesn't like this and tells him to go away and there's a big scuffle and the story is very much told from different perspectives in, in who's telling the story. So the police said that Ned Kelly shot at him and Ned Kelly said, I wasn't even there, I was outside. And if we look outside, we see little, the little image of Ned Kelly. Now, you know, this is an artist's perspective, so of course Ned Kelly wouldn't have been wearing his armour. He's using that little symbol. But look at the way he's painted that quite bright little scene through the window. Notice also how he's doing it in a deliberately quite naive way. You know, he's wanting to, he's interested in an artist, Henri Duanya Russo, um, a European, a French artist, and this patterning is something he really got from him. So now we're inside the house, but the scuffle's begun, and um, the scuffle causes the police to run after them, and they go, and now they're out in the bush and they're outlaws and they're um, going into the bush on their horses and the police are chasing after them because they feel that during this scuffle bad things happened. And Ned Kelly and his brother Dan and a couple of other fugitives go along and one of them um, is Stan Hart. I don't think I actually said at the beginning that I'm Deborah Hart, um, Head of Australian Art, but I promise you this is no relative. Steve Hart is here wearing a dress on his horse and for some reason the, the men occasionally dressed up, it was part of the subterfuge, but it was also kind of a symbol for Nolan that things weren't all quite going quite right, you know. So here's this, this man, he's dressed side saddle, apparently he once even um, won the Greta races riding side saddle in a dress, so maybe there's also a bit of a, a sense of humour and play in these works. But notice as we go around how the mood shifts. So we have that quiet ambiguity, we have the little drama there, and here we're really taken into a scene in rural Victoria. Now I mentioned the Irish poor working on small subsistence farms, and you can see this in the background. He's created that atmosphere. And here is um, one of um, Kelly's relatives, and uh, she's seen to be quilting the armour. Now again, of course, I don't think the armour was ever quilted, but it is about the tenderness of a relative um, trying to protect him with this soft, beautifully um, blue, this beautiful blue that he uses. And again, look at the patterning on the dress and the shadow that the armour casts and this wonderful imaginative sense that Nolan is bringing to the story. So the story is gradually building and as we move along we come to where the action really happens. So these three paintings that we're going to look at now are when um, the Kellys come across the police in the landscape and there's a shootout and eventually um, three of the policemen die. The Kellys know the country better than the police. And um, so here we have the first shooting of um, one of the constables here. And Nolan's trying to give you this sense of the unreality when a violent act happens. It's almost like dreamlike, you know, he's got him upside down and floating. And you can see Kelly's not feeling too easy about this. His eyes are down. And there's this moment where everything feels a little bit heightened. Notice how he does the eyes in these. You see here how the eyes are, are kind of red and white now in the way that he's painting. It's this sense of things aren't going terribly well. You know, this has now become escalated to a much greater level. And notice how the fugitives are wearing these red masks and later on you'll see how he did a couple of drawings with that as well really trying to just distill things to the very essence. But this idea of floating figures is also something you see in modernist art. So here we have Kelly looking quite disturbed and it's interesting that Nolan talked about this and he said that, um, you know, in a sudden violent accident, stand still. I've exaggerated at times to give this feeling of uh, the unreality. Kelly seems to be present as a force of destiny. So just a little bit of smoke at the top, and notice how the landscape, it's a bit denuded here, so there are different things going on that he's telling us, 
And, um, but of course now the, the story becomes become quite complicated because they are really on the run and um, people are after them. But he alters the pace. Nolan really changes as he goes around. Um, he gives us a different sense of movement. So at times he picks on quite quirky little elements like the peacocks that would react when um, they saw someone and made these incredible noises. So the Kelly gang apparently sometimes had peacocks with them. So when strangers came, they'd made, make that, you know, that amazing noise they make. And um, so the peacock is alerting them to the idea of the policeman. And here we have the chase. And Nolan kind of liked the idea. He's, he's being a bit, he's wanting to bring a bit of lightness of, of mood back into it. And he imagines Ned Kelly as kind of an Aussie rules player. And so he's wearing sporting colours and you can see this action of him moving on the horse. And these two works here are quite closely interrelated. So notice how this policeman, the poor policeman, is kind of looking very ill at ease and he almost seems to be riding backwards on his horse. And here we see Kelly and Notice how the landscape is kind of reading into the visor, that beautiful warm yellow landscape that he brings in there. So there's always this integration of the landscape and the figures. And sometimes Nolan also, because he'd done a lot of research into the story, you know, he had a whole library of material about Kelly. And an interesting thing is that one of his relatives, his grandfather in fact, had been a policeman who'd gone after Kelly. So he was very interested in the story from different perspectives. And so he'd read very deeply and there was one little aside in the story about a man whose name was Aaron Sherritt. And Aaron Sherritt um, was a police informer. He was part of the <coughs> Kelly gang first and then he informed on the gang to the police. And poor old Aaron Sherritt ended up copying it in the end too. But here we have Aaron Sherritt at his wedding and his bride being pulled under the bed um, in a homestead when there were the police we're never quite sure was it the police running from the Kelly gang or the other way around at times and they got more and more police as this went on but this was a little incident where they were pulling Aaron Sherritt's wife under the bed but look at how it's painted look at the beautiful colors that he's used the colors of the patchwork of the quilt the patterning of the wallpaper remember we saw that right early on and these quiet sort of comical figures in the front but things are getting tricky and Nolan gives us a sign here in this horse that is falling from the cliff. And apparently um, he said th uh, there were accounts of this chase over a vast extent of the country in Victoria and the police were going up a very muddy track at one point and the poor horses were falling and Nolan used that image of the falling horse as a symbol that things were really going to turn. This is a turning point in the story because soon things are going to catch up with the Kelly gang. So let's move from this falling horse again, a bit like that thing of things being stilled in time to where another aspect of the action happens. So the Kelly gang had decided to, um, they'd come up with a very complicated plot to trap the police who were after them um, and they'd, they'd um, tried to block the railway line but um, someone informed the police in time and told them that they were hiding out in Glen Rowan at, um, at a particular pub. And so the police were informed and this time they were ahead of the game and so they came to find Ned Kelly and his gang and um, notice how things are starting to come apart for the gang. And so you get those stripes that we saw, the sporting stripes, but here the buildings are opening up, a woman is running, um, they're setting the pub on fire and of course this was the time when Ned Kelly actually appeared in his armour and uh, looked this extraordinary sight to the police and they shot at the armour but Kelly um, survived that shooting only to go on trial shortly afterwards, but some of the others like Steve Hart and Dan Kelly were shot. And so you have um, these images almost like they've become little Kellys in a way. But again, notice, you know, it's important as we look around to, to think about how innovative these works were as paintings and what a fresh way of telling um, a story of a bushranger this was when it was first shown. 
So here we have um, the little policemen all lined up. We have this dramatic scene. The, um, the Kelly gang is now captured. In this one here, we see how Kelly, you know how I talked about the little visor? And um, in this one, the visor is filled with that red color of the blood red sky. And, and Nolan said that by this time, he'd done this research, and he said by this time they'd got such a big army of policemen together that it was incredible, you know, for the small gang. And so he gave them a, a little goat as a, um, a kind of a side there. And we see an Aboriginal tracker here. And this one is, is this work is subtitled with the, word, with the words that some Australians have come to know quite well, which is, such is life. You know, life is full of drama and good and bad things happen, but such is life, you know? And um, the story can be interpreted in many different ways. So you see, it's almost like the police are little like cutouts in the way that he's done them here. And then in the, the courtroom, they reappear at the back of the court. And this is Ned Kelly on trial. And he's standing a bit resolute, isn't he, with his arms folded, <laughs> a bit like you there. And he's, um, he's in the courtroom, and here we have the judge. And of course, um, you know, Nolan has very much kind of made things up a bit too in how he's imagined the courtroom to look. Again, he's loving playing with the patterning of the, the red and white. But, um, you know, Ned Kelly stands trial, the judge is justice, um, uh, Redmond Barry, who um, was very influential in Victoria. He did a lot of good things, but he was also a very strict judge, and he sentenced Ned Kelly to hang. You know, you've got to think that Ned Kelly was only in his 20s. He was 23 at this time, and in fact, Sidney Nolan was a very young man when he was painting these, these pictures. So there was something about a young man's story in all of this. And when the judge sentenced Ned Kelly, Ned Kelly said, oh well, I'll see you on the other side. And a very strange thing happened because only a few weeks later, the judge became very unwell with a septic carbuncle and died suddenly. And so the words got an increased re resonance, which Nolan used in his description. When we have a look at these paintings, as I said, it's an extraordinary kind of depiction of an Australian legend. Nolan himself became a kind of legend. He, we celebrated last year the centenary of his birth. He was born in 1917, and he painted these as a young man on a kitchen table. So, you know, we think of artists as having grand studios and becoming very famous. But at this stage, he painted them in a place called Heidi in Victoria, which was um, the home of some patrons, Sunday and John Reed. And uh, the place has become very famous partly because of where these works were created. It's really lovely to be able to share this with you today. It's, it's a little bit of a whirlwind tour, but I do hope that you've enjoyed just a little snapshot into one of the great series of Australian art paintings. Thank you so much. <laughs>